would be conducting a workshopping collage here in the building, starting at 9 o'clock, and there are a few places left. So uh, afterwards, we can talk to Gene or Sarah if you're interested in doing that. Um, I'd like to introduce Jennifer Shields, who is a visiting professor of architecture at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. She's going to moderate the panel today. She will introduce the panelists. And I would like to thank the School of Art and the College of Architecture and Design for this collaborative event and the sponsorship of the exhibit as well as today's panel. So thank everyone for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. And I, I wanted to thank Tricia and um, Diane for organizing the panel and inviting me here, as well as Sarah for, um, for organizing this fantastic exhibition. Um, so we're privileged to have a knowledgeable interdisciplinary panel for a discussion on the topic of collage. And each panelist has a unique interest in and perspective on collage and its relevance to uh, their own discipline as well as to contemporary culture more broadly. And so I'll just briefly introduce um, each of the panelists. We have Pavel Zubak, who owns Pavel Zubak Gallery in New York and is also the founder of the International Collage Center. Brian Abersiak, Associate Professor of Architecture, Deb Schmerler, Associate Professor of Graphic Design, and Joshua Bianco, Assistant Professor of Art. Um, so I'm going to ask the panelists to talk a little bit more about their specific interest in collage and connection to collage, uh, but I wanted to um, explain a little bit about my, um, my interest specifically in the topic. Um, so as an architect, my interest in collage stems from its capacity to abstract spatial and architectural qualities. So let me make sure. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. The Cubists value collage as a hybridization of painting and sculpture at the threshold of two and three dimensions. So for them, collage facilitated a new conception of space as a means of abstracting three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional medium. And so I wrote a book called Collage and Architecture that's actually going to press this week and it'll be um, out in early December. And that book surveys the architectural implications over the past century. So collage, like architecture, emphasizes process. And there's a simultaneity of spatial, material, and intellectual content that's inherent in collage through the synthesis of unrelated fragments. Um, but the fragments typically retain at least a vestige of their original identities, and so the process of construction remains evident in the resulting collage. Um, I wanted to quote the architect um, Stephen Hall, because again, just making this correlation between architecture and collage. He said, a city is never seen as a totality, but as an aggregate of experiences, animated by use, by overlapping perspectives, changing light, sounds, and smells. Similarly, a single work of architecture is rarely experienced in its totality, except in graphic or model form, but as a series of partial views and synthesized experiences. So my conceptual interest in collage stems from this phenomenological perspective on architecture, that we understand or interpret a work of architecture as an aggregation of visual, tactile, and auditory experiences, but also that those experiences and our interpretation is filtered through personal biases and memories. Um, so the ambiguity that exists here in how we find meaning or multiple meanings in a work of architecture or in a work of collage, um, because of our prior knowledge and experience, is what I find fascinating about the topic of collage. Um, I also believe that like a collage that reveals evidence of time and its methods of construction, a work of architecture contains an accumulated history um, because it's experienced rather than just observed. So if a work of architecture is only fully comprehended through this bodily engagement, then collage can be a representational analog or a medium to interrogate the spatial and material possibilities. So I organized a series of discussion topics into two basic themes. Um, the first set of questions relates to um, composition and construction. And another theme would be questions of content and context. So starting with issues of composition and construction, I wanted to ask, um, Pavel, at the end of your lecture, you mentioned that while conceptual rigor and depth are important, the aesthetic quality and craft are or should be equally important. And the term, I think the term craft means different things to different people. A work can be 
seemingly imprecise but still have a high level of craft at the same time. So I was interested in seeing what some of the qualities you look for are in evaluating work for its craft specifically. Um, I think that for me, what the question I always ask myself when I'm encountering an artist's work for the first time is, is that artist adding something to my understanding of what a collage is materially in terms of process? Um, are they are they are they establishing some new vocabulary that I've not seen before? Uh, there's a lot of um, there, 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 there's a lot of redundancy in, in the world of artists working with found materials. Um, I think there are just certain images and objects that lend themselves to this art form. So, um, so it's curious. I, I, I used the example once of um, an artist who in the 1990s showed, had done this wonderful collage using a famous illustration of, um, of the, the muscles in the human back. Um, with a with a woman's head atop and a, and a moon in the background, and it's a beautiful image. And what I showed her then from a book up on my shelf was a much earlier collage by Jacques Prévert, the surrealist poet, um, using that same illustration in a different but quite similar way compositionally and even in terms of process, the kinds of reproductions, the quality of the paper. Um, and my and my point was not to. Um, to sort of deflate her or somehow undermine the originality of her conception, but rather to just point out that um, that there that there is this you know, there is this redundancy that happens. So I so I'm so I'm looking more for the for that individual voice that comes through the material and the process. And I would ask a similar question of the other panelists: How would you consider or even define craft in relation to your own work or your own discipline? Uh, well, um, with, within the field of design or graphic design, it's hard to narrow it down so much um, sometimes. But um, I guess you could think of craft as just formal relationships, right? And the connection of uh, your choices of things that you choose to put together and how those um, fixate with each other. But um, you can also think of craft as the entire process. And I guess that's how I think of craft within design is that it's just, it, it also has to do with your quality of your concept and your quality of your interaction with the people that you're working with and the sort of, you know, the entire process. I think, I mean, that, your definition, Deb, of craft is process expands, I think, the nature of, I think, a lot of times when we talk about craft, we talk about the, the act of making, the physical act, and I think you just expanded it to include a bit of the psychological or to the thought process associated with the kind of, the cutting of material or the positioning of material. Um, and I think for us, for the work, and again, a lot of what I'll be speaking today is, um, it's a collective idea about collage through my own design practice with Andrew McClellan, who was supposed to be here today. Catherine is here, and um, Adanche talks about in Divisadero, a quote that I read before every lecture, about how everything is collage, even genetics. And he talks about the primary character, Coop, who's welding the bumper of an abandoned car onto a 58 Buick. And he concludes again by saying everything is collage. And that'll perhaps be a topic today, but even the idea of craft, that craft can be expanded. And so for us, collage embodies time. It embodies this kind of temporal horizon of the historical past in terms of the objects that one finds, um, the personal past in terms of the psychological process of actually beginning to think of how these objects might assemble and create meaning, the, the present tense, which is the physical kind of, the scalpel that cuts the paper and begins to arrange the objects, um, and then this future tense, which is in multiple variations, but of creating new realities. So while one's taking existing objects, the, the whole concept of creating new ideas from existing objects is, is, is embodies this idea of a timeline, which, which is very important. And I think that this idea of psychological craft versus physical craft is really interesting. I'm totally with you. Uh, one of my colleagues said, hey, there's a talk coming up at CCAC about collage. You should, you should send something. And I was like, 
why? Like I was, I didn't understand why I'd never thought about collage, you know? And I think it's precisely because it, everything is collage. I mean, I don't understand, you know, like uh, in 1839 when Paul de Roche said, it said uh, painting from this day forward, painting is dead after he saw the first photograph. I wonder if in 1988 when, I don't know, Bob Bobbington saw the first Photoshop file that he said, from this day forward, collage <laughs> is dead. No, it's like, who can who cares? Collage is always around. It's like air, you know? I don't, we wouldn't have a discussion about air. It's everywhere. It's everything. I don't, and I don't think about craft all that much unless it's distracting from the concept, you know? So like Mark Tanzi, that's where you talked about it. It distracted you from his ideas. Yeah. Well, it just left me wanting. That's right. Because once, once the, uh, once the, the, the kind of intellectual part is done, what's left is not so satisfying. Right, there's a the one hit. Right. But that also gets to the idea of distance, like you were saying, you know, a future, like the distance from a piece, and what that, you know, that you want the payoff when you get up close to have as much meaning as it was.